When the payoff for finding effective treatment is so high, it is important to minimize type 2 errors. Now here the number is 2, so this seems okay. 2 is less than, than 10, and it's not a series of numbers here, so why would we not just go ahead and use the number 2? Well, in this case, because it's a Roman number 2, two, two vertical lines, because it's, that's the way we represent type 2 error. There's also type 1 error. This is the normal statistical way to write this. So when you write numbers that are normally accepted in one way, you follow that way. In this case, numerals, uh, Roman numerals, I should say. The inventory consists of 30 personal characteristics to be rated by the respondent. And in this case, very simply, 30 is bigger than 10, therefore we should use the number. In nine of those studies, women scored higher. In seven, men scored higher. And in the other 12, no reliable difference between men and women were observed. So this is getting a bit confusing, isn't it? So in this case, we're writing nine here, the spelling of nine. And then here we're spelling seven. And then here we're writing 12. So it seems like we're following the rule, right? This is because it's smaller than 10. This is because it's smaller than 10. And 12 is bigger than 10. But because it's in the sentence with many numbers together and we're comparing those numbers, in that case, you just want to write out the numbers and not spell them at all. Each child read four stories and answered 12 reading comprehension questions about each story. Now in this case, we have each child read four stories and answered 12 reading comprehensions. Now this may look like, wait a minute, shouldn't we write four here? Because again, we have numbers, multiple numbers in one sentence. So shouldn't we be you know, comparing these? Isn't this like a, a comparison or, or a series of numbers? And in this case, look carefully, each child read four stories. That's four stories. If we then said, and then they answered questions about two stories, in that case, these numbers are related and we're trying to compare them. But in the example we have here, that is not the case. We have four stories and then we have 12 questions. These are different things not being compared. So we just have four stories and that's all we're talking about. The stories are four. Four is less than 10, so we're going to spell it out. 12 is just one time 12 questions. We're not comparing 12 to any other number of questions, so it's 12. And 12 is bigger than 10, so we're going to write the number. A uh, little bit confusing, right? Well, it's a little bit tough, I have to admit, but you can see the logic. The numbers are isolated. They're not being directly compared to each other. The clients were returned to the clinic for assessment one week and five weeks after. Here is a perfect follow-up to that example we just had. We've got one week and five weeks. This is the same thing, right? We're comparing the same thing. Therefore, because it's the same thing, there's a comparison, we're going to use the numbers and not spell it out. Minority group characters were portrayed as responsible for the solution of a problem in on 6% of the episodes in which they appeared. Here, 6 is smaller than 10, but it's a percentage. And remember, percentages, we're going to use the number. The greatest increase in responding was between trial 2 and trial 3. And again, trial and trial, they're the similar things. We're comparing them. They're in a series. So we're going to write the number, even though they're less than 10. The sketches presented to the different groups contain two, three, four, five, and six facial features respectively. Respectively meaning that this one was first, and this one was second, this one was third. Okay, this is really clear. These are numbers all related to each other, and therefore we're going to go ahead and write them as numbers and not spell them out, because we're comparing them. 
Each set of letters could be arranged to form either of two words. Less than 10, so that's pretty obvious. It looks a little bit complicated because here we've got this either, but it's not another number, so we're not comparing numbers. We're not having a series of numbers, so we just spell it out, T-W-O. A total of 53 clients volunteered. 40 were selected on the basis of clinical histories and treatment to date. Here we have two sentences. This is an independent, this is independent. We don't put them together, we just use a period, that's fine. But here, we should never begin a sentence with the number. We must always spell out the word of the first word of a sentence. So that's the case here. There's other things we could do, right? We could use the semicolon. We could use a comma and a conjunction, remember? We could even just use a colon and then begin the next sentence with the capital F. And in that case, we wouldn't even have to do that. We could just begin it with 40, couldn't we? Because it's a number, it's at the beginning of a sentence, but no, it's not the beginning of a sentence because we have a colon. Remember a colon, we can bring two sentences together. So there's many ways we could do this, but if we're going to have a period, then we must begin with a word that is spelled out because it's a separate sentence. There were 16 pictures in each condition. Eight pictures were of familiar people and eight were of unfamiliar people. So in this case, this looks like uh, pretty straightforward, right? Eight of this type, eight of that type, 16 of that type. Well, we have separate sentences, first of all, so this is a sentence here, that's okay. But what about the second sentence here? We have eight and eight. You would think that you should write the number, but remember this special case of beginning of sentence. Beginning of sentence, we must spell it out. In the conjunctive condition, the group could not go on to the next step until at least three-fourths of the group members had mastered the previous step. Here is our fraction three-fourths, and remember we said that in this case you need to spell it out, three-fourths because it's a common fraction or, or a ratio, uh, except in the case of ratios, you go ahead and you write the ratio. Oh boy, confusing, right? It's really helpful to have the rules next to you. And I just remind you that you can buy the APA guidelines and the MLA as eBooks from Amazon and other eBook providers, which is super, super convenient to have it on your cell phone or on your tablet or on your PC right next to you. That is so easy, so helpful. Of course, you can go ahead and Google it, but again, I guarantee you, you can find everything in Google even though it's wrong. You can look for a wrong spelling, you can look for a wrong example, and somebody has done it, and then you're gonna copy it, and you're just copying what's wrong and you're wrong.